six corporations funding the attack on women's reproductive rights. Judd Legum over at popular.info has just a barn burner of a piece here with, uh, well, I'll let him uh, tell us who his co-authors were on this, because uh, Judd is on the line with us. Popular.info is the website. He is a journalist and founder of popular.info. Uh, you can also follow him on Twitter at Judd Legum, J-U-D-D-L-E-G-U-M. Judd, welcome back to the program. Um, uh, tell us, uh, A, about the people who helped collaborate with you on this article. I, I know you're building, you know, quite a, quite a, uh, a, a news facility there at popular.info. And, and how this, how, how these contributions tie into this Dobbs v. Jackson Women's Health Organization case that is, uh, before the court right now. Yeah, well, we're getting started, uh, building a, uh, organization over here. I've got two um, researchers who helped me with a lot of these pieces, Tesnum and Rebecca, and they helped me with this piece on looking at a lot of the bills uh, that are underway to restrict reproductive rights. And what's motivating a lot of this is the anticipation that probably by the end of June, you never, we don't know the exact date, but expected by the end of June, the Supreme Court will rule on Dobbs v. Jackson's Women's Health uh, and likely either erode or possibly reverse uh, Roe v. Wade. Right. Uh, and so what, what we're seeing now, you, you see this every year, but it, it's taken, it's, it's more intense, but it's also taken on a new importance because what you're seeing now is states implementing or proposing, and some of them passing, in Idaho, they just signed a bill into law that is cutting off access to abortion after six weeks, right. uh, which is, you know, before many women even know that they're pregnant. You have other states who are looking at 15 weeks. This is all sort of part of a game where they're trying to kind of guess where the Supreme Court. Yeah, if I could just jump in here real quick. This is this is from yep. your newsletter today. In Tennessee, State Representative Alexander has introduced a bill that would ban outright ban all abortions. Um, and That's does right. not allow abortions even during the first six weeks of pregnancy. No exceptions for rape, no exceptions for incest. And uh, when she was asked if family members of a rapist could sue the woman who gets the abortion, she basically said yes. In Oklahoma, lawmakers have introduced three different abortion bills. In Florida, state lawmakers have passed a bill banning abortions after 15 weeks. Uh, West Virginia and Arizona both moving legislation like that through their legislatures, uh, which brings us to the to the corporations that are that are supporting these particular legislators who are pushing these particular laws. Yeah, what we did is we went down the line. We looked at six states where these bills are really aggressive and moving either have been signed already or are, you know, past one house, past one chamber. And, you know, we found that there's a lot of there's a number of very prominent corporations, including uh, corporations that are in healthcare, care uh, who are supporting not just people who vote for these bills, but we only look at the sponsors of these bills. So we found that, for instance, for example, CVS Health, uh, which talks about their commitment to women's health care, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, donated $27,600, we just looked through 2020, so we're really only looking at 2020 and 2021, to co-sponsors of these abortion bans uh, in five of the states that we looked at, Arizona, Tennessee, Oklahoma, Idaho, and Florida. Hmm. Um, so although these bills are getting more and more extreme, and although the consequences could be very tangible, uh, for all the women in these states, millions of women, you still have very prominent uh, corporations who are backing the politicians who are behind these measures. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you, they, on your list of companies, CVS, which is in the health space, AT&T, uh, donating uh, to uh, abortion bans or legislators who are writing abortion bans, not just voting for them, writing them, in Florida, Arizona, Tennessee, Oklahoma, and Idaho. Merck, I mean, you know, <laughs> which is making one of the anti-COVID drugs now. Uh, Merck donating to uh, lawmakers behind abortion bans in Florida, Tennessee, and West Virginia. Comcast donating to lawmakers behind the Florida abortion ban. United Health, the health insurance 
giant uh, donating to lawmakers behind the abortion bans in Idaho, Arizona, and Oklahoma, and Anheuser-Busch uh, donating to the uh, lawmakers who passed this abortion ban in, or wrote this abortion ban in Idaho. Judd, are any of these companies responding to your outing them? Uh, no, we, we haven't. We, we didn't. We reached out to all the companies that you just mentioned, um, and none of them got got back to us. You know, I think we, we find usually that's the case when they don't plan on doing anything or they don't have an explanation. You know, usually if a company is not planning on donating to these folks in the future, they'll come out and let us know. But if they don't really have anything to say, uh, they generally think it's best uh, not to respond. So that's what we got. We didn't get any any response. And it'll be interesting to see if this kind of posture, which is a public relations posture, can really hold. Because right now, you know, these, these bills either have just been signed or they're still in the process. Supreme Court hasn't been ruled. But, you know, it's almost April. June is, 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 a, is rapidly approaching. And people are going to wake up to the fact that it's very likely in just a couple of months it's going to be a dramatically different environment in the United States uh, with respect to reproductive rights. And whereas before you had a floor that was kind of, that was established through this constitutional right that's existed since the 1970s, is going to be gone, and it's going to be a state by state continual battle to preserve these rights. Right. And in fact, here in Oregon, the uh, I, I don't know if they acted on it. I, 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 I frankly didn't. I haven't seen a, a follow up. But the legislature and the governor were talking about appropriating millions of dollars to support the infrastructure of abortion, abortion clinics here in the state, because Idaho, the state next door to us, is, you know, if their legislation is approved by the Supreme Court, is going to cut off abortions. And we're expecting a flood of people from Idaho. Which is, you know, our, most yeah, of our eastern yeah, and that's border. and that's what some of these companies actually are doing. Companies that are more supportive of uh, abortion rights and want to make sure that their employees are can get access to this kind of um, this kind of care. They're saying, oh, well, we'll pay for you to to travel, to fly to another state. Um, which which is fine, uh, except for the fact that pretty soon there's not going to be that many states where this is even uh, a possibility. It also really underscores what really happens to the nature of uh, abortion access when you have these when you have this these kinds of laws, because it just becomes yes, if you have a good job or you're you have your own money uh, and you have a good employer, you have your own resources, you'll still be able to continue to get whatever kind of care that you want. If you can't travel hundreds of miles, if you can't take several days off of work, if you don't have that support, it's not going to be available to you. And that's that's really what the, the sort of new reality is going to be. Yeah, there's there's a, a, a wind a blowing, as they say. And and I, you know, which raises you know the the much larger question: Why do we allow corporations to buy politicians in the first place? But that's beyond the scope of this whole conversation, <laughs> I suppose. But Judd Legum, Popular.info. Hey, Judd, thank you so much for dropping by.